Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why is the Catholic Church the true Church of Christ? Because she was founded by Jesus Christ himself. And since she is the only true Church founded by our Lord, it is the only Church that venerates Mary as Christ the Lord venerates her. You always say that. Why? There are many reasons. One of those reasons is that the Church teaches correctly that the Blessed Virgin Mary is sinless. I will explain why the Church teaches that. Stay tuned. I am Señor Moreno. Thank you, that's nice. But you will explain why the Catholic Church teaches that Mary, the Virgin Mary, is sinless. But how in the world could be correct? In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, St. Paul clearly says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We read in John chapter 1, verse 8, If any man says he has no sin, he's a liar, and the truth is not in him. So the affirmation must be obvious. No Christian should believe that Mary was free from all sin. You cannot state that the Bible lies, correct? Also, we cannot forget that even Mary says, My soul rejoices in God my Savior. In Luke 1 47, she knew she was a bloody sinner. She knows that she needs a Savior. So what do you say? As the true Church of Christ, the Catholic Church states that Mary is sinless. And with a simple scriptural analysis and sound theology, the Church explains why. First of all, Paul's indeed says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned. He's not discussing every single human being past and present. Paul's point is that all, without distinction, hath sinned. See what Paul says before in Romans chapter 3, verse 9. What then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For I have already charged that all men, both Jews and Greeks, are under the power of sin. Some Paul is stating, in other words, that the Gentiles need Christ's salvation as much as the lost children of Israel do. The salvation is extended to everyone. See what Paul says later in Romans chapter 10, verse 12. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and bestows his riches upon all who call upon him. In the context in which Paul writes, he says plainly that all have sinned without distinction and not without exception. Why? Because there are exceptions. A very young child before the age of reason can not willingly sin. Paul is not talking about Jesus himself who never sinned, or about Mary, his mother, who never sinned either. Babies, Jesus and Mary are exceptions to the rule, all men have sinned. Let me give you a sound and a straightforward theological reason shared by the church that explains how, through scriptures, we can recognize that Mary was conceived without original sin. Let us go to the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus describes how we are supposed to identify bad prophets. He says that the only way to discern a wicked prophet from a good one or a lousy teacher from a good teacher is by examining his fruits or the quality of his actions or accomplishments. 
if the fruit is good, then the prophet is good. If the fruit is wrong, then the teacher is evil. Even though he may present himself as righteous, Jesus says, So every sound tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears evil fruit. A sound tree can no bear evil fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that doesn't bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by the fruits. So let us talk about Mary. What is the fruit of Mary? Or rather, who is the fruit of Mary? Let us go to the famous passage in Luke chapter 1, verse 39. We have Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth, old Elizabeth, who is pregnant with John the Baptist. When Elizabeth sees Mary, she, filled with the Holy Spirit, shouts, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should call to me? Can you read that again? Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. What do you say? Blessed are you among women. Stop. Please emphasize what follows. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, says Elizabeth. What is that, blessed fruit? The Lord, God in the flesh. Elizabeth says clearly, Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come, should come to me? So the fruit of Mary is perfection. It is God in the flesh. Now, if we remember what Jesus says, as I stated before, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 17 through 20, Every sound tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears evil fruit. A sound tree cannot bear evil fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. So, if Jesus is not only a sound fruit, but the fruit of fruits, the ideal of any fruit, then mom, for being the one who Elizabeth said, blessed is the fruit of your womb, cannot be anything else but immaculate. A sound tree, as Jesus says, cannot but produce an unspoiled fruit. Thus Mary cannot be a sinful woman, because a sinful tree cannot produce God who knew no sin. We remember in 1 John chapter 3, verse 5. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. But the consequence can be more than the cause. The consequence feeds the cause. And the cause of Emmanuel, God with us, is an immaculate woman and the immaculate principle the Holy Spirit. You cannot have an immaculate principle united mysteriously with a non-immaculate principle, a sinful woman, to produce the begotten God in the flesh who is sinless. Again, Christ knew nothing because he came from more than a sound tree. Mary, who is immaculate. Mary was conceived without sin because God chose her to be the only tree who could produce that only fruit, Jesus, God in the flesh. Only an immaculate Mary could receive the Holy Spirit within to beget God in the flesh. Nothing corrupt fits such a noble purpose. Jesus doesn't know anything. The Holy Spirit doesn't know sin. Neither does the Father who sent the Holy Spirit to beget Jesus, God in the flesh. Now, we are ready to answer the other objection made to the Immaculate Virgin Mary. Mary declares, My soul rejoices in my Savior.
Why wouldn't she say that? If you're sinless and made ready to receive the Savior of the world, you absolutely shouted as she did. Mary is happy because she understands that she was chosen by God to be his instrument of peace. Mary understood that before her conception, God had chosen her to be the mother of the Savior. Mary, and this is Catholic dogma. Mary was saved by being prevented from receiving original sin. Remember, Mary is more than an old Ark of the Covenant that carried the Word of God in the tablets. You remember what happened to poor Uzziah or Uzziah in Samuel chapter 6, verse 1 through 7. He tried to save the Ark of the Covenant that apparently was about to fall off. You guys remember the story. The oxen pulling the wagon that transported the Ark of the Covenant stumbled. This guy named Uzziah, Uzziah or Uzzah, he grabbed the ark because he didn't want it to fall. And God's wrath was kindled against Uzzah and he smote him down, reducing him to dust. God killed him instantly. Why? No one was supposed to touch the ark because it was too holy. Now imagine Maria not carrying the original tablets of a stone in which the Ten Commandments were written, but carrying the word Mayflesh. The same word that was from the beginning, the one that was with God, the one that was God. Mary is the new ark, absolutely holy and preserved from sin. She is the ark of the new covenant. Much more than the old ark. And as Jesus says, this is in Mark chapter 2, verse 22. No one pours new wine into the old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. As Pope Benedict XVI explains, Mary was protected from original seal to have her ready to receive the Lord in her womb, the new wine skin, the perfect place for the Lord who is the new wine. The Lord was supposed to be within a person whose being, life or will was not for herself as private possession, but as a dispossession self or as giving herself entirely to God. Why? For our own sake, for your sake, my sake, in this mysterious way, Mary was saved. And then she correctly says, My soul rejoices in God my Savior, and we should say it as well, we will. When, God willing, we are in heaven, and we chanted with Mary, with Saint Joseph, and the rest of the angels and saints. We must conclude that God saved Mary when he decided to make her the prime instrument of his peace by making her immaculate and receive the King of the Universe in her womb. We must chant with her, My soul rejoices in God my Savior. This is it, my dear audience. Remember, I am El Señor Moreno. God love you all.